In today's video, I'm going to talk to Sylvia to see how she got started with Node.js and what she will talk about in the upcoming Node Congress conference. This video interview is sponsored by Git Nation and the Node Congress team. At the Node Congress conference, you can get a ton of insights on JS backends, explore Berlin's vibrancy, gain practical experience in workshops, and engage with amazing speakers from your favorite open source projects. And you can also join an amazing after party and have fun. You can expect everything at the biggest events about JavaScript backend and DevOps, Node Congress, happening in Berlin and online on April 14th and 17th. So today we have Sylvia with us, which is a full stack web developer, tech writer and teacher, and a developer advocate at StackBlitz. Thanks for joining me, Sylvia. Why don't you give everyone an introduction about yourself? Hi. Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, my name is Sylvia. Uh, I am Polish. That's why there's a W in my name. Um, I'm currently based in London. Um, currently, I run the developer relations at Stackblitz. Uh, it's a, a company that offers an online IDE, uh, which is capable of running Node.js applications inside the browser. Um, as you said, I'm a tech writer and educator. You could see me in different parts of the web, like uh, I was involved in the React docs and I co-organize Future of Coding, a uh, very um, vibrant community in London for technologists who want to see the better web. <laughs> so yeah, I like pierogies, hiking, biking and tech. <laughs> Maybe that should be in my bio. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. That is a pleasure for us to have you here. Especially, you talked about the React Docs. I'm a big fan of the React Docs, the new React Docs. So, so Sylvia, um, can you tell us more? How did you start your career in web development in general? Yes, definitely. So, I'm what you called uh, what you call an uh, engineer of a non-traditional path. Um, so, prior to tech, I used to teach at the university and I ran my own NGO. But then I moved to New York and I switched careers. Uh, that was informed both by the fact that tech is really interesting, but also the fact that, you know, at some age you like to have health insurance, for example. <laughs> so I went to a boot camp, um, and it, which was actually four years ago on the mark today. And um, I later stayed there to teach and then moved into engineering and the real. And now I run the Vril developer relations at Stackbleeds, which is super exciting. So I'm definitely feeling like we're, I am in a right place where I should be to grow more. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, as a lot of us web developers, we love the creativity part of this. Uh, and I think you come actually from a really good pro background for working web development, like teaching and stuff. And as we're all actually aware that building anything nowadays from like React, Svelte, pretty much any sort of like big technology framework requires you using Node.js somehow. So like in your experience, um, what aspects or challenges that you like found working with Node.js and how do you think we can actually overcome those challenges in your opinion? Yeah, definitely. So I am still kind of new, uh, or at least I feel very new to web development. I am very humbled by the width and the you know, the breadth and the depth of everything that there is to know. So I'm not trying to really offer opinions or hot takes, which may stem really from lack of experience or exposure. I know that this is, you know, a common practice in especially tech Twitter, but I'm not doing that. But um, that being said, I did have a lot of really amazing conversations with our colleagues and especially, for example, with uh, Dominic Alm, who is our founding engineer, who you know, we, we talked about what it takes really to, you know, build, for example, web containers. And so it was, you know, really difficult to even like imagine that and to um, bring it to fruition to, to get, you know, a Node.js application um, or like Node.js build in the browser. So, you know, like 
just like imagine you would need to study, you know, Node.js internals. And uh, this is not really something that people really do uh, when you're learning or using Node.js. You're not like, okay, I'm just going to go and read the source code. Like, it's not something that, you know, most people do, at least. I know that there are some who, who do. So, you know, because there wasn't also anything similar like that. Um, and, you know, it's not only about web, uh, web containers. It's really about really the question is about like how can you be creative with any tool that is at your disposal right because oftentimes if you're trying to push the limits of something like you are oftentimes the first one you're the trailblazer and so maybe you know my answer is not really about working with node per se but you know trying to enable people to run node.js applications inside the browser or you know in the bro uh, broader kind of theme like how you know, what are the challenges of, um, of like trying to innovate in tech. And so to that, I would just say, you know, mm -hmm. don't be overwhelmed, take it, you know, one step at a time and just find entry points, um, for, you know, the possible solutions to the wildest ideas that you may have. Um, so speaking of like how like complicated and big Node.js is and like, and it like, it acts like a black box some, some of the times. So. Can you like share with us of what what do you what do you like and dislike about the Node.js ecosystem and how it works? Yes, definitely. So, um, I mean, when I hear such a question, <laughs> it sounds like an invite <laughs> to you know becoming a meme or a main character on Twitter, and I'm definitely not trying to do that. <laughs> but but let's see. I mean, the things that I so. You know, I really like the fact that maybe, I mean, that's going to maybe be obvious, but I really like the fact that Node.js brought JavaScript to server-side environments and, you know, all the progress that could happen thanks to that. And I think that, you know, just going about our day, I don't know, scrolling Twitter, we oftentimes don't really appreciate the huge engineering effort that went into building this ecosystem. Like most of the conversations yeah. that we are having right now in the web dev ecosystem, like literally wouldn't be possible had we not had Node. Like we wouldn't have many of the hot takes out there. <laughs> the careers of many, you know, content <laughs> creators wouldn't be possible because, you know, um, because no, it had, had Node uh, not existed. So I am definitely like humbled by not only, you know, how Node, you know, is present everywhere and all the innovation that is constantly ongoing and, you know, the different runtimes that are stemming off Node. Um, but I'm just, I'm also really, really inspired by different conversations. And um, I see sometimes on GitHub, you know, different discussions on how, what, what to do next or where engineers or maintainers are and explaining their thought process um, against one or another uh, solution. So I think that this is something that also helps people who are maybe, you know, kind of beginners, but also kind of advanced uh, to better understand the ecosystem. <laughs> so I would say definitely folks should participate more in, you know, the discussions on GitHub, for example, and less so on Twitter. And then the, I mean, Twitter is also fine, <laughs> but but definitely like uh, it, it is a short format that also, you know, has its limitations. And then when it comes to mm -hmm. yeah. like things that I dislike, well, at StackBleeds, we'd like to see more convergence, more like overlap between Node.js and the browser's J uh, JavaScript runtime, right? So, I mean, there's much effort already going um, into changing that, like, for example, you know, landing fetch. Uh, so I am very hopeful yeah. that, you know, the gap is actually closing. Yeah, I uh, totally agree with that. I mean, I think that's what I like about the ecosystem in general, the Node.js ecosystem. Um, I really enjoy the competition that what's like it makes it and it just kind of like improves it over time. And that actually brings us to um, the fifth question. Like since you are like you played a major role in web containers. So how do you think that Node.js actually played uh, like the role of Node.js being played, like building the next generation of web containers APIs? Mm -hmm. 
let me just uh, cor uh, uh, very kindly correct you. I didn't play a major role in web containers, not at all. We have tremendous developers who, <laughs> engineers who did that. I was just a tech lead, uh, no, not, oh, wow. I was just a lead on, a project lead on web container API. So in my capacity uh, of, um, of uh, developer relations lead, I was also overseeing the launch of the the launch to the general public of uh, web container API. So, um, yeah. but yes, uh, web containers are, you know, a tremendous uh, innovation. It's, uh, we are really testing the, <laughs> the boundaries of brow the browsers. Oftentimes we are uh, submitting lots of, you know, bug reports that we found, or sometimes we are even helping um, fix those, right? So, mm -hmm. Node.js is really, was really the starting point for our inspiration as Stackbit for helping, you know, the de developers enjoy coding. Meaning, you know, when you're, for example, a new developer and you want to start uh, coding, I mean, good luck with setting your environment. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a pain. <laughs> and so, you know, the question was like, how can we help, um, new developers or even like co open source maintainers just enjoy the process of working with code more. So, you know, an obvious kind of step would be to enable running uh, Node.js applications inside the browser. So, for example, with the release of the recent Web Container API, we modeled, you know, the surface of that um, API based on the Node.js API surface. Um, we did that because, you know, first of all, this offering, this uh, tool, it is supposed to serve, you know, um, the developers. So you are most productive with the tools that you know. So, you know, being um, inspired by the achievements of the Node.js team, uh, we also mm -hmm. just, we just assume that they are con the conventions that they set, you know, were not only, you know, well known, but also made sense. So we wanted uh, to help our users just know what to expect and like feel intuitive about, you know, the, the API. And so we based it on the surface that's already, you know, well known, that's actually kind of a standard. We worked really closely with our community. We were soliciting feedback, you know, while developing it. And um, we were really looking for you know, opinions on every exposed method. Um, and we did find, you know, that the closer this resembled the Node.js uh, API surface, the easier it was for the developers just to feel like at home. And, you know, on this mm -hmm. point, there was like the tech lead on this project, Roberto Vidal, he did like an amazing, like phenomenal job in, you know, making the right decisions to help our users just feel cozy with that API. Uh, so the web containers API right now is, you know, out there. It's, uh, what, from what I hear, it's pleasant to use and it's also free. So, you know, if you want to build your play playground, generally you shouldn't suffer, you know, <laughs> throughout the process. Yeah. So <laughs> definitely, you know, we, we really wanted to just also, um, just p pay homage to, you know, the Node.js, um, API. That also like brings us to the final question. I think it's actually one of the most important questions that a lot of uh, a lot of the folks are actually waiting for, which is since you're actually going to have a talk like in the next Node Congress conference. So can you give us like a sneak peek of what your talk is going to be about and like what attendees can expect from that? Yes, um, I'm very happy that I get to uh, you know, be featured at the conference. Thank you so much for uh, having me there. Um, well, so the talk is really meant to be a kind of retrospective of, um, you know, what it actually takes to bring, you know, such innovation to fruition. I personally really, like, I would really want to see much more talks of this kind of, of, of this kind where, you know, after the job is done, uh, the, in, the team shares what exactly, you know, went right and went wrong, you know, when they were, you know, making different decisions. 
And so in the talk, I will first provide um, some very short, you know, history of JavaScript and uh, Node.js so that, you know, everyone can be on the same page. I don't want to assume any kind of context beforehand. And then uh, we'll, I, I will talk about, uh, you know, the obstacles of running Node.js applications inside the browser, because I see that many folks just really don't understand that it's not just as simple as, I don't know, compiling Node to Wasm, uh, because it's not only, you know, the, the matter of uh, different languages, but also different tools, you know, different APIs. So for example, browsers don't know and don't care about file systems. <laughs> so it's really like bridging different gaps, not only on the syntax level, but also on the like kind of, let's say, mental map uh, of, the, of those tools, you know, level. And then uh, we will take, you know, um, a walk down the memory, uh, memory road uh, to, I think it's, a, a, the saying is memory lane, right? So as a kind, you know, of uh, the retrospective. So, you know, web containers, it is not a cloud service and there's no patching for each framework. So it's really a monumental amount of engineering effort. And so I wish that, you know, there were more people talking about really the struggles and the joys of bringing something like that. And I hope that, you know, if we have this kind of conversations, there's going to be more innovations and just web is going to get better and better. Awesome. That looks, uh, that looks like a super exciting talk actually to attend to. Uh, especially web containers and combining the two words of like Node.js, the web, having UI working smoothly, so many factors actually into the, into the game. So yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm looking forward for your talk, um, which is going to be in the next Node Congress, Berlin, April 14th and 17th. Um, so yeah, thank you, Sylvia. I really, really enjoyed the talk with you. Thank you for like joining us today and having this amazing interview and having all the info that you laid down throughout the video. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here and uh, for, you know, a spot at the Node Congress. I'm really excited to be there in person and online. So if you're watching this and want to say hi, you can, you know, reach me on socials or in person at the conference.